Άρχεται η τελετή απονομίζεις του Διεθνούς Βραβείου Lord Byron 2024. Your Excellency Lord Lytton, uh, Your Excellency Lord Byron, αξιότιμη εκπρόσωπε του Πρόεδρου της Κυβέρνησης και Υφυπουργέ Εξωτερικών κ. Γεώργια Κότσιρα, Εκπρόσωπε του Μακαριωτάτου Αρχιεπισκόπου Αθηνών και Πάση Ελλάδο πάνω σε ολογιότατε Πάτερ Νικόλαε, αξιότιμοι κύριοι Υπουργοί και κύριοι Βουλευτέ, αξιότιμοι Πρόεδρε του Αριού Πάγου κυρία Ιωάννα Κλάπα, εξοχότατοι και εξοχότατε κυρίε και κύριοι Πρέσβει, αξιότιμοι εκπρόσωποι των ενόπλων δυνάμεων, αξιότιμε Δήμαρχε Μεσολογγίου, αξιότιμοι εκπρόσωποι εκπρόσωπε του Περιφερειάρχη Αττικής, αξιότιμοι συνάδελφοι, κυρίες και κύριοι ακαδημαϊκοί, εκλεκτοί προσκεκλημένοι. Επειδή μέρος του ακροτηρίου μας είναι κυρίως στα αγγλικά, η οι uh, welcome remarks θα γίνουν κυρίως στα αγγλικά, αν επιτρέπετε. It is with great pleasure that we welcome you tonight to the Lord Byron International Prize Award Ceremony, where the first prize of the year 2024 will be awarded to the Honorable John Lytton, 5th Earl of Lytton, member of the House of Lords and direct descendant of the Lord Byron via his daughter Ada Lovelace. We are truly honored to have the presence of Earl of Lytton among us tonight. Uh, Mr. Constantinos Valenzas, President of the Society of for Hellenism and Fear Hellenism, is going to present to us the rationale for the award, but first, Allow me please to address some initial remarks in my capacity as president of, and of the co-sponsor organization, the Academy of Athens. The ceremony is held tonight in the exquisite, uh, I would say, ceremonial hall of the emblematic building of the Academy of Athens. Undoubtedly, the painted uh, decoration, which consists of eight panels, as you can all see, executed in oil on canvas by Christian Griebeckel is the dominant element of the hall, which narrates the myth of Prometheus, a metaphor for the notions about the role of the academies as bearers of wisdom and light. Prometheus remains a prominent figure in Greek culture as he represents the man uh, who defied the strict law of gods and stole the fire to help humanity, driven by his love of humans and his sense of solidarity in this. In this context, I believe that anyone could discern the similarities that these two personalities share. Prometheus uh, of, of uh, mythology and, and Lord Byron, uh, two emblematic ions that became a real inspiration to, for all of mankind for the genuine passion and their struggle for protecting the values of freedom and resistance to any kind of oppression. And even though Prometheus was a Greek hero brought to us by the tradition of Greek mythology, Lord Byron was an Englishman who in real time in real life, decided to leave his country and reside in Greece, amazed by the sparks of resistance that led to the Greek Revolution against the Ottoman Empire. A gifted personality with a kindred spirit, he became one of the most prominent figures in the movement of Fir Hellenism. Hellenism especially evolved at the beginning of the 19th century when Greece was struggling for its national independence 
after almost 400 years of Ottoman occupation. As an intellectual movement, it was initially inspired by the Greek classical past with a renewed interest in ancient literature and art, and then reinforced by the courageous struggle of the Greek people during the years of their uprising. We may say that fear Hellenism as a notion was transcended by this specific historical period, which was linked to the Renaissance of the Greek nation, and it represents something wider, the continuous struggle for the protection of fundamental human rights and the dominance of the values of freedom and solidarity. In 2024, we reached the 200th anniversary of Lord Byron's death in Messalongi, which is why the year was declared as Year of Lord Byron and Fear Hellenism. It is a well-known fact that Lord Byron's fates, fate was intrinsically linked with the fate of the Greek people of this historical town. Lord Byron was committed to the vision of a liberated Greece, and he provided substantial support, both financially and morally, to the Greek rebellion. Extensive celebrations are taking place all over our country, organized by the Greek state, but also by many other entities. Among the celebrations, the Academy of Athens will actually organize an honorary event as well for the 200th anniversary of the death of Lord Byron, and a special committee of our members has already been appointed to organize the specific commemoration. We are also heading the, to year 2026, which constitutes the 200th anniversary of the heroic exodus, meaning escape, of Mesolongi. It is an interesting fact that this anniversary coincides with the anniversary of 100 years of operation of the Academy of Athens. Among the planned celebrations, the Academy of Athens would organize an honorary event for the exodus of Mesolongi as well. And it's a pleasure that we have here the mayor of Mesolongi with us tonight. It is also a great pleasure to host tonight the inauguration of the exhibition held uh, at the Eastern Hall of the Academy entitled Lord Byron and the Philhellenic Aura, which is co-organized by the Academy of Athens and the Philhellenism Museum with archival material from the museum that includes more than 100 exhibits, personal items and fam family heirlooms of Lord Byron uh, uh, that depict uh, Byronian heroes and display his diverse personality as a romantic poet and a political figure as well. We invite you all tonight to visit our exhibition, which is on the Eastern Hall of the Academy at the conclusion of our ceremony. Um, Lord Byron left uh, to all of us contemporary Greeks a significant cultural heritage. And by welcoming tonight a member of his bloodline, the Honorable Earl of Lytton, I believe it becomes easier to establish a tangible connection to the past that we all share. Lord Lytton, apart from a noble career as charter surveyor and a member of the House of Lords, honors his ancestry. He contributes to a regular basis, on a regular basis to the Newstead Byron Society Review. He was elected president of the Newstead Abbey Byron Society in 1988 and he embraces the values of free Hellenism. Uh, and now I would like to invite Mr. Costadillos Valenzas, uh, president of the Society of Hellenism and Free Hellenism, to take uh, the podium. Mr. Valenzas, thank you.
Dear Lord Lytton, dear Lord Byron, dear Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs representing the Prime Minister, Your Excellencies Ambassadors, Your Holiness representing the Archbishop of Athens, dear President of the Supreme Court of Greece, dear Representative of the Armed Forces of Greece, dear President and Secretary General of the Academy of Athens, dear Rector of the University of Athens, Dear members of the Parliament and representative of the region of Attica, dear Mayor of Mesalongi, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honour that I present today, on behalf of the Society for Hellenism and Philhellenism, from the emblematic premises of the Academy of Athens, with a history of 2,500 years, the first Lord Byron Award for 2024. This is a milestone year as we also celebrate the bicentenary from Lord Byron's death, and our ceremony today is also a homage to the great romantic poet. Lord Byron remains an enigmatic and complex personality that continues to attract scholars, historians, and artists, even 200 years after his death. His name stands at the intersection of Romanticism, Liberalism, and Philhellenism. Lord Byron received at the beginning of the 19th century an education based on classics, inspired by Greek history, which influenced his remarkable literary and intellectual work. Child Harold's pilgrimage marked his initial contribution to Greece by bringing it to the forefront as a cradle of the Western civilization, leading progressively with his works to the adoption of the claim that Greece might still be free again. Byron famously declared, if I am a poet, it is because of the era of Greece. Byron was the first celebrity of the modern age who achieved a status of international renown. From 1812 to 1816, he published Oriental-themed narratives, creating the iconic Byronic heroes that transcended literature. The public opinion adopted these heroes who were depicted in paintings, table clocks, porcelain vases, and all kinds of art objects. When the Greek War of Independence started, Greek fighters were perceived by the public as Byronic heroes and became symbols of Hellenism. Byron presented the Greek struggle as a class of civilization against barbarism, aimed at gar garnering European support without aligning it to the social revolutions and radical movements in Europe. The figures from his works, like the Giaour, the Bride of Abydos, the Corsair, and Don, Don Juan, found resonance in the Philhellenic movement. Byron's literary creations, imbued with romantic heroism, began to symbolize the Greek War of Independence, and this is his second contribution to Greece. In 1823, the romantic poet was transformed into a determined fighter and pragmatic statesman. Byron's support for the Greek cause extended beyond mere intellectual and material assistance. It encompassed political, diplomatic, and artistic realms in what was a global movement. The whole public opinion adopted Byron's ultimate cause, the liberation of Greece. Inspired by Lord Byron, thousands of young volunteers from all parts of Europe and the United States of America, often former enemies during the Napoleonic and the Anglo-American Wars, fought under the same flag for the liberation of Greece. They were inspired by Lord Byron and the legacy of the Athenian democracy and Pericles, who taught us that freedom is the sure possession of those alone who have the courage to defend it. Lord Byron's death not only brought the Hellenic struggle back into the international spotlight, but also reignited the Philhellenic movement at a crucial juncture. The subsequent diplomatic and political actions triggered by his death changed the rationale of international relations and ultimately led to the establishment of the modern Greek state. Lord Byron and the Philhellenic movement, which became synonymous to his name, 
introduced innovative political, economic, and defense instruments which facilitate, even today, alliances to deal with international crises when they threaten our values. The naval battle of Navarino in 1827 and the mission of the French Expeditionary Corps in 1828 were the first military operations in history that had a humanitarian character and the aim to support a nation struggling for its freedom. Byron's legacy earned him the status of a national benefactor and hero in Greece. The Greek newspaper Telegrafo Greco announced Byron's death in 1824 as follows. O sorrow, O sorrow, the wonder of Europe, the pride of Great Britain, the idol of his friends, the redeemer of Greece, Lord Byron is no more. This distinguished romantic poet and great, with great ethos laid with his work the foundations for the perpetuation of Hellenism as a noble virtue, as a set of values that allows every civilized person to develop in a way that is beneficial and creative for them in their society. These are the everlasting values of freedom, democracy, justice, and human rights. And these values promote progress, innovation, and social responsibility. The Society for Hellenism and Philhellenism honors the great Romantic poet with the establishment of the Philhellenist Museum in Athens housing a large collection of Lord Byron's personal items. With the construction of the Philhellenist monument in the center of Athens in front of the War Museum, just across the street from the British Embassy, and with the institution in collaboration with the Academy of Athens of the International Lord Byron Prize, which is awarded annually to personalities who embrace the values of Philhellenism. Together with Lord Byron, we pay tribute today to the United Kingdom's Prime Minister, George Canning, who conceived and achieved the Treaty of London in 1827, to various British heroes of the Greek War of Independence, <clears throat> like the Commander Frank Abney Hastings, Generals Gordon and Church, Admirals Cochrane and Codrington, to the founders and members of the Philhellenic Committee of London, and to many other British Philhellenes, volunteers, who fought bravely for the liberation of Greece, pursuing the very same ideals. Dear Lord Lytton, uh, dear Lord Byron, ladies and gentlemen, today's ceremony, taking place 200 years after the death of Lord Byron, is a landmark moment in our history. Today, the descendants of Lord Byron and the descendants of our nation, which owes its freedom to the great romantic poet, gathered here to reaffirm our commitment to the noble values of our civilization. The Lord Byron Prize is presented today with honor in collaboration with the Academy of Athens to the Earl of Lytton, a distinguished member of the House of Lords with an exemplary career inspired by Philhellenic values, a direct descendant of Lord Byron through his daughter, Ada Byron Lovelace. Lord Lytton undertook important initiatives in the House of Lords in the fields of environment and education and actions to address the major social problem of housing. He is also very active in promoting the legacy of Lord Byron through his long association with Byron Society internationally. In granting this award, we seek to honor Lord Lytton as a contemporary philhellene in the most universal sense of the word, but also to honor the timeless legacy of Lord Byron and the historic friendship bonds between the United Kingdom and Greece. I congratulate the Laureate Lord Byron and thank you all very much for supporting this prize and the values it represents. Thank you very much. Now we thank uh, uh, Mr. Valenzos for his uh, remarks and the wonderful introduction of our uh, uh, Earl of Lytton, who we honor this evening. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Mr. Lytton to be awarded. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Mr. President of the Academy, President of the Society for Hellenic and Pan-Hellenic uh, Associations, my Lord, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a very great honour for me and I thank the Academy for hosting this event uh, and for its hospitality and I certainly look forward very much to the uh, opening of the uh, exhibition which is to follow this. And uh, the Society President, I thank you for your introduction and the invitation to address this esteemed gathering because you have indeed uh, bestowed on me a great honour and I firmly believe that it's not one that I have earned. Uh, this is one that uh, I receive in all humility for what I might say are all those other hopefully right-minded people uh, that uh, follow uh, to, uh, and aspire to the principles that my ancestor Lord Byron uh, believed in. Now, um, so that I don't forget it, there is one um, other uh, anniversary uh, later this year, I believe I'm right in saying that in October um, will be uh, the 80th uh, anniversary of the liberation of Athens in particular from the Axis powers. Um, and uh, my uh, father, a short time after that, was ordered, he was a serving officer in military administration, he was ordered to um, uh, take himself to Athens and make a, an, an address which was made from that famous white marble statue that stands in the center of, of Athens. And there is a picture of it in his memoirs. And I'd just like to say that um, Greece was under Turkish, Ottoman rather, domination for 400 years. Uh, in four years, uh, they, uh, the Greek people suffered further appalling um, atrocities uh, and retributive um, punishments of the sort that sadly have come to hallmark our post-war experience. And that's a matter of regret, but is something that um, Greece should certainly always bear in mind, that these atrocities should never occur again. And we say that, but of course, in a sense, we know that so often they will occur again, but we need to be on guard for the warning signs of that. I was particularly surprised and very much humbled to have been included in a role of honour of the very many eminent people, statesmen and world figures who have previously received your Lord Byron International Prize. And to be numbered among those is, uh, as I have inferred earlier, a matter of some personal amazement. Uh, Lord Byron himself um, largely avoided personal honour and glory, and he was surprised, to say in his own words, to awake one morning and find himself famous. But he recognised his duties and status as an aristocrat and what that demanded, even though it might not extend to certain bits of his uh, own private life. Um, presidents, uh, the award, among other things, references my parliamentary work. In our modern times, Byron would still have recognised a largely two-party system in England and the polarising effect that that has. He might have drawn comfort from the now quite large but politically independent element of today's House of Lords. And in terms of modern legislatures, that is a rather unusual characteristic. And it just so happens that I uh, adhere to that particular grouping of politically non-aligned people in the House of Lords. 
Now, I am not a poet, uh, not a great writer of um, prose, uh, uh, and um, I uh, can't uh, claim to have um, uh, taken up arms in defense of, of, of a country, um, but I, as you have heard, I am uh, involved in the world of property. And the property world enables me, I think, to understand principles of value. Value of things, yes. Value of things that people use and occupy, most certainly. But beyond that, the values that are part of everyday transaction in terms of mercantile transaction, but also the transaction between government and people, because that is an element of transactional analysis as well. And if my profession tends to render these things down into things like net present value with a, a dollar sign or a pound sign or a euro sign stuck in front of it, I apologize for that because, of course, there are other things of value, environmental value, social value, social capital, things that don't get measured. But the fact that we, if the matter is, we understand that they are there and that like air and the seas around us, they are not to be counted on as being in infinite and inexhaustible supply. So we have to nurture those very carefully. I'd like to think Lord Byron uh, and his uh, liberalism would have recognized the principles that we govern, uh, our, adopt ourselves, or try to adopt ourselves in public life. They're known as the standards in public life. They used to be referred to by the name of the noble Lord, Lord Nolan, who, whose commission first fashioned the list. And it's quite short, it's seven items, selflessness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty, and above all, leadership. And of course, the knowledge that this applies across the political, social, and the mercantile sectors. And like Lord Byron's poetry and his principles, those aren't owned by any one sector. They're, if you like, in modern parlance, an open source good. And similarly, the Byron message itself is an open source too. And for each country, social or academic group or individual, he means to us what the prism of our comprehension and our particular focus allows. It is a concept of many facets, a concept of many possible ways of arriving at solutions. It is a concept that requires, indeed demands, our collaborative sense of uh, taking matters forward. It's in part inherited, in part earned by study and diligence, and it's enacted and ennobled as part of our common humanity. Today's Europe would, I think, be strange to Byron. Gone are the imperial powers and zones of uh, interest of his time. But polarization and the narrow exclusivity remain the enemies of his brand, and I suspect the rest of ours uh, brand of liberation, even in our own times. And yet the core values are unchanged, and they continue to matter and have relevance because they are as old as humankind. It's about trust and confidence, commitment to purpose, persistent pursuit of common purposes. In my more recent parliamentary work, I've been arguing for justice for homeowners who have been sold apartments in blocks that did not meet the building code prevailing at the time. And sadly, this is not something that is peculiar to the United Kingdom. 
It is unfortunately something that affects buildings and residents and people in their own homes all around the world. This is an abrogation of the trust that has been put in systems that should be protecting homeowners in particular, but also other vulnerable uh, occupants. And one thinks of pupils in schools, people in hospitals and institutions, where the safety of the fabric is part and parcel with the safekeeping of those vulnerable people. If you lose trust in transacting with one another, it doesn't just hurt public administration and national uh, stability, but it irreparably damages the commercial confidence as well. So this matters today just as much as it would have done in Byron's time. Presidents, I am going to uh, crave your indulgence because I would like to um, put in a quick commercial plug. So this is the commercial slot that is about you. Uh, as some of you will know, in the centre of London, there is uh, a, uh, a large monument to Lord Byron uh, in bronze. It's quite a large edifice and it was uh, put up in about 1880. I'm looking at uh, Lord, Lord Byron in case I've got the date wrong. Um, and uh, it was done by public subscription and the, the stone plinth, the large stone plinth, was donated by the people of Greece. Unfortunately, due to um, a highway improvement scheme, this monument, which used to sit in uh, a splendid position on the corner of one of London's great parks, is now in the middle of a traffic island and has been so for many decades. Lord Byron is trying to, with the, with the uh, Byron Society in London, is trying to arrange to have it moved to a more fitting location. And I just would uh, say to this, this gathering, um, if uh, any of you feel able to support that mission, I know that uh, many Byronists would be delighted. That is the end of the commercial plug. So having taken advantage of my position here at the dais and with the command, at least they haven't been turned off yet, the command of the microphones uh, before me, um, I'm just going to finish by to saying thank you to the Academy, thank you to the Society for the honour that has been bestowed upon me. I will certainly hold this in my uh, uh, memory for many years to come, as I am sure will my wife and family. And just to say, it is such a pleasure to be back in your country again. And really, if you like, this is the icing on the cake of this visit. And so thank you very much indeed from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, Lord uh, Earl of Lippen, uh, for your wonderful remarks reminding us of the values that uh, Lord Byron had enunciated and how they are connected to everything that goes on in our society today. And uh, uh, thank you also for mentioning uh, the uh, predicament of the monument. Uh, we were, some of us at least, were not aware of, of the uh, change in location. And uh, I don't know how we can help since we don't vote in the UK, <laughs> but in any case, uh, we hope that uh, Lord Byron and, and his efforts will be successful and, and they will be in a, even a much more prominent place 
uh, for its display than it is now. Uh, I would like to uh, remind you that we have the uh, inauguration of the exhibit on the uh, East uh, Room of the Academy. Uh, but uh, we can only accommodate a few people at a time. So uh, we'll, I would urge that most of you, ladies and gentlemen, go out to the garden where we have some refreshments and uh, take your time and uh, socialize. And then a group at a time would be coming in and uh, looking through the exhibit area, 30 or 40 people at any one time. So I hope uh, that this works. Uh, we haven't really scripted uh, it and, and uh, organized it in great detail, but uh, this is the plan. And uh, I'm sure be this being a summer day, you will all enjoy some refreshments before going on to see the exhibit. The first group, with 30. Yeah. The first group of 30 will be going through this door and to the left. The rest of you can go either out this door or through the back door directly to the garden for refreshments. Uh, this brings our uh, yeah. gathering. Uh, I would like to, uh, to thank uh, and congratulate uh, Ms. Luisa Karapidaki, who is the uh, curator uh, of, uh, of the uh, exhibition, and Ms. Elpiniki de la Porta. Uh, as, as the president said, so we're going to organize groups to visit, and uh, the remainder will stay at uh, the reception. So I hope you will all enjoy the great work uh, uh, that uh, our colleagues uh, uh, did uh, uh, for you to see uh, uh, exhibits uh, as, uh, related to Lord Byron. Thank you very much. Thank you, President. Thank you all. Vieta <laughs> Isinevria.